I'll never forget that day back in the spring of 2006. I'll never forget that day back in the spring of 2006. I was a surgical resident at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. I was a surgical resident at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. I was a surgical resident at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. Taking emergency call. Taking emergency call. I got paged by the ER around 2 in the morning. I got paged by the ER around 2 in the morning. To come and see a woman with a diabetic ulcer on her foot. To come and see a woman with a diabetic ulcer on her foot. To come and see a woman with a diabetic ulcer on her foot. I can still remember sort of that smell of rotting flesh as I pulled the curtain back to see her. I can still remember sort of that smell of rotting flesh as I pulled the curtain back to see her. And everybody there agreed this woman was very sick and she needed to be in the hospital. That wasn't being asked. Everybody there agreed this woman was very sick and she needed to be in the hospital. That wasn't being asked. The, the question that was being asked of me was a different one, which was, did she also need an amputation? The question that was being asked of me was a different one, which was, did she also need an amputation? The question that was being asked of me was a different one, which was, they should also need an amputation. Now, looking back on that night, I'd love so desperately to believe that... Now, looking back on that night, I'd love so desperately to believe that... I treated that woman on that night with the same empathy and compassion... I treated that woman on that night with the same empathy and compassion... I'd shown the 27-year-old... Uh, newlywed, who came to the ER three nights earlier with lower back pain. I shown a 27-year-old newlywed who came to the ER three nights earlier with lower back pain. That turned out to be advanced pancreatic cancer. That turned out to be advanced pancreatic cancer. Uh, in her case, I knew there was nothing I could do that was actually going to save her life. The cancer was too advanced. In her case, I knew there was nothing I could do that was actually gonna save her life. The cancer was too advanced. In her case, I knew there was nothing I could do that was actually gonna save her life. The cancer was too advanced. But I was committed to making sure that I could do anything possible to make her stay more comfortable. But I was committed to making sure that I could do anything possible to make her stay more comfortable. I brought her a warm blanket and a cup of coffee, um, brought some for her parents. I brought her a warm blanket and a cup of coffee. I brought some for her parents. But more importantly, you see, I passed no judgment on her. But more importantly, see, I passed no judgment on her. Because obviously she had done nothing to bring this on herself. Because obviously she had done nothing to bring this on herself. Because obviously she had done nothing to bring this on herself. So why was it that just a few nights later as I stood in that same ER? So why was it that just a few nights later as I stood in that same ER? And determined that my diabetic patient did indeed need an amputation. And determined that my diabetic patient did indeed need an amputation. Why did I hold her in such bitter contempt? Why did I hold her in such bitter contempt? You see, unlike the woman the night before... You see, unlike the woman the night before... This woman had type 2 diabetes. This woman had type 2 diabetes. She was fat. And we all know that's from eating too much and not exercising enough, right? She was fat. And we all know that's from eating too much and not exercising enough, right? And we all know that's from eating too much and not exercising enough, right? I mean, how hard can it be? I mean, how hard can it be? As I looked down at her in the bed, I thought to myself, if you just try caring even a little bit... As I looked down at her in the bed, I thought to myself, if you just try caring even a little bit... You wouldn't be in this situation at this moment with some doctor you've never met about to amputate your foot. 
you wouldn't be in this situation at this moment with some doctor you never met about to amputate your foot. Why did I feel justified in judging her? Why did I feel justified in judging her? I'd like to say I don't know. I'd like to say I don't know. But I actually do. But I actually do. You see, in the hubris of my youth, you see, in the hubris of my youth, I thought I had her all figured out. I thought I had her all figured out. She ate too much. She got unlucky. She got diabetes. Case closed. She ate too much. She got unlucky. She got diabetes. Case closed. Three years later, I found out how wrong I was. Three years later, I found out how wrong I was. But this time, I was the patient. But this time, I was the patient. Uh, despite exercising three or four hours every single day. Uh, despite exercising three or four hours every single day. And following the food pyramid to the letter. And following the food pyramid to the letter. I gained a lot of weight and developed something called metabolic syndrome. I gained a lot of weight and developed something called metabolic syndrome. Some of you may have heard of this. Some of you may have heard of this. I had become insulin resistant. I had become insulin resistant. You can think of insulin as this master hormone that controls what our body does with the foods we eat. You can think of insulin as this master hormone that controls what our body does with the foods we eat. Whether we burn it or store it. Whether we burn it or store it. It's called fuel partitioning in the lingo. It's called fuel partitioning in the lingo. Now, failure to produce enough insulin is incompatible with life. Now, failure to produce enough insulin is incompatible with life. Now, failure to produce enough insulin is incompatible with life. And insulin resistance, as its name suggests, and insulin resistance, as its name suggests, is when your cells get increasingly resistant to the effect of insulin trying to do its job. Is when your cell get increasingly resistant to the effect of insulin trying to do its job. Once you're insulin resistant, you're on your way to getting diabetes. Once you're insulin resistant, you're on your way to getting diabetes. Which is what happens when your pancreas can't keep up with the resistance and make enough insulin. Which is what happens when your pancreas can't keep up with the resistant and making enough insulin. Now your blood sugar levels start to rise. Now your blood sugar levels start to rise. And an entire cascade of pathologic events. And an entire cascade of pathologic events. Sort of spirals out of control that can lead to heart disease. Sort of spirals out of control that can lead to heart disease. Cancer, even Alzheimer's disease. Cancer, even Alzheimer's disease. And amputations, just like that woman a few years earlier. And amputations, just like that woman a few years earlier. With that scare, I got busy changing my diet radically. With that scare, I got busy changing my diet radically. Adding and subtracting things most of you would find almost assuredly shocking. Adding and subtracting things most of you would find almost assuredly shocking. I did this and lost 40 pounds weirdly while exercising less. I did this and lost 40 pounds weirdly while exercising less. I, as you can see, I guess I'm not overweight anymore. More importantly, I don't have insulin resistance. I, as you can see, I guess I'm not overweight anymore. More importantly, I don't have insulin resistance. If you ask yourself, what's a cell trying to protect itself from when it becomes insulin resistant? If you ask yourself, what's a cell trying to protect itself from when it becomes insulin resistant? The answer probably isn't too much food. The answer probably isn't too much food. It's more likely too much glucose. Blood sugar. It's more likely too much glucose. Blood sugar. Now, we know that refined grains and starches elevate your blood sugar in the short run, and there's even reason to believe that sugar may lead to insulin resistance directly. Now, we know that refined grains and starches elevate your blood sugar in the short run, and there's even reason to believe that sugar may lead to insulin resistance directly. I'd hypothesize that it might be our increased intake of refined grains, sugars, and starches that's driving this epidemic of obesity and diabetes. I hypothesize that it might be our increased intake of refined grains, sugars, and starches that's driving this epidemic of obesity and diabetes. But through insulin resistance, you see, and not necessarily through just overeating and under-exercising. But through insulin resistance, you see, and not necessarily for just overeating and under-exercising. Now, when I lost my 40 pounds a few years ago, I did it simply by restricting those things. 
Well, I lost my 40 pounds a few years ago. I did it simply by restricting those things. I dream of a day when our patients can, you know, shed their excess pounds and cure themselves of insulin resistance. I dream of a day when our patients can, you know, shed their excess pounds and cure themselves of insulin resistance. What good does it do us to punish those with the proxy? What good does it do us to punish those with the proxy? Sometimes I think back to that uh, night in the ER seven years ago. Sometimes I think back to that uh, night in ER seven years ago. I wish I could speak with that woman again. I wish I could speak with that woman again. I wish I could speak with that woman again. I'd like to tell her how sorry I am. I'd like to tell her how sorry I am. I'd say, um, you know, as a doctor, I delivered the best clinical care I could. I say, uh, you know, as a doctor, I delivered the best clinical care I could. I delivered the best clinical care I could. But as a as a human being, I let you down. But as a as a human being, I let you down. Um, you didn't need my judgment and my contempt. You didn't need my judgment and my contempt. You needed my empathy and compassion. You needed my empathy and compassion. And above all else, you needed a doctor who was willing to consider. Above all else, you needed a doctor who was willing to consider. Above all else, you needed a doctor who was willing to consider. Maybe you didn't let the system down. Maybe you didn't let the system down. Maybe the system of which I was a part was letting you down. Maybe the system of which I was a part was letting you down. If you're watching this now, I hope you can forgive me. If you're watching this now, I hope you can forgive me.